Welcome back. Today, we will be installing the Cherubis plastic skid plate on my 2020 Sierra 250L. Uh, this is a really surprisingly heavy duty skid plate. It's about eight millimeters thick of plastic, which is about 320 thousandths of an inch. And it's a lot heavier duty than I thought it was gonna be based on what I've seen from other people's videos. In case you're curious, here are the instructions that Cherubis provides. That's enough of those. Now I can throw that in the bin. And it comes with two brackets, a piece of rubber hose, which we will get to in just a minute. And a handful of hardware. But the most important thing it comes with, more important than the skid plate itself, is a sticker. I've said it once, and I'm going to keep saying it. You better send a sticker with every product you sell if you're a company selling products, especially to motorcyclists. Stickers are important. Let's go out to the shop. So the tools you're gonna need are to remove the old skid plate. You're gonna need either a T-handle or a ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket. A uh, deep well or a shallow will work either way. You will need a five millimeter and a four millimeter Allen key or an Allen socket, whichever way you prefer. For the new hardware, you're going to need a scissors to cut the tube that goes on this bracket. Obviously you're gonna need both brackets and the skid plate. Um, these tools are coming out of my standard um, toolkit that I keep on my motorcycles. Uh, this is just one that I have that I swap between the two as, uh, as I need them. And really everything I need to do 99% of all the maintenance on these bikes, on both of them, is in that toolkit. And that's a nice thing about having two Hondas is the tools are gonna to be the same between the two bikes more often than not. And I think there's only a couple larger sizes that, uh, that are different between the two. So let's look at removing the factory skid plate. Once again, the only thing you're going to need for the factory skid plate is a 10 millimeter socket. And then this should just pop right off. Interesting, there is a drip of blue on there. That might be from, actually that is from the coolant. So it looks like I, like everybody else, seem to have that same coolant leakage problem out of the weep hole. Lovely. In case you are curious, the original factory skid plate here, as you can see, is made of polypropylene which is uh, not the strongest or best plastic for um, this sort of application. The Acherby skid plate, while it doesn't have any markings on it, I'm, I'm familiar enough with plastics to know, and I believe it said on their website that this is high density polyethylene, HDPE. Same thing milk jugs are made out of, and uh, a lot of um, dumpsters or rolly bins, or wheelie bins, that's what the Brits call it, a wheelie bin. So the next step is to feed this rubber hose over these two um, legs of this bracket because you do not want this rubbing metal on paint and then metal on metal with the frame because that's going to cause some corrosion. The instructions said to cut two five centimeter chunks out of this. What I'm actually going to do is just cut it in half, feed both ends on here, and then cut off the excess if I need to. I feel like that's the, the smarter way to do it. And I'm just going to guesstimate what half is, and I was actually quite far off. Wah, wah. Oh well. A little bit of silicone spray would probably make this a lot easier. I might have to grab some. Yeah, I'll go and get some silicone spray. I'll be right back. So here is the silicone spray. Oh yeah, that's much easier. Come on, behave. Perfect. So well, the one that I cut that was uh, a little under half actually is about perfect. And this one I'll just 
Do I want to leave it asymmetric and just have some excess, or do I want to cut it flush? I'll cut it flush. Usually I'm the kind of person that likes to embrace asymmetry, but I will cut a little bit extra off. So that's what that should look like. And that should be ready to mount up to the back of this plate now. The next step is to fasten the rear bracket onto the skid plate and make sure that the hook shape is facing aft on the plate. If it isn't facing that direction, it probably isn't gonna work too well. You know, it doesn't come with washers for this and you know, I might consider actually adding some washers. Um, some Loctite would probably not be a bad idea either, so I might grab some of that as well. Button heads are very difficult to screw in by hand. So here I've got some quarter inch washers that are stainless steel. Uh, because unfortunately I, I seem to be out of M6 washers, but quarter inch and M6 are so close It's not going to make much difference for this application Get that the right way up. This is the thread locker I'm going to use Just medium strength because uh, I'd like to actually be able to get these off someday and I'm going to go with an unconventional way of applying the Loctite here by backfilling. And then I'll just move these in and out a little bit to work it into the threads. A Cherbies does not provide a torque spec for these fasteners, and I honestly don't think it matters. Just get them good and tight on there. Maybe a little bit too much thread locker. Oh well. The next step is putting on this forward bracket. This one did come with some washers, which is nice. Make sure this isn't too tight because I'm guessing it's slotted for a reason so that you can move it around as you need to once it's on the bike. It is going to be tough to see, but if you see where this fastener is right here, just upwards and aft of that bolt is a cross support tube that goes from this side of the frame to the other side, which is about where this foot peg is, or just behind the foot peg. You want to get those two legs of that bracket in between that mount and up and over that tube. And then this will sit up here and you can bolt the front of the bracket in. So let me just reset up my camera angle so you can see how that works. Personally, um, if I can, I'm going to choose to reuse the factory 10 millimeter bolts simply because I they're stainless. And the two holes here will line up to the factory bolt holes. And that is a completed skid plate installation. Uh, getting those two upper M5, or I think, sorry, they're M6 bolts in was definitely the trickiest part of this entire process, but really not too difficult. And if I wasn't filming, this would probably have taken maybe 15 minutes tops, probably actually less than that. Uh, it is very, very easy to do this job. And I'd say, I, 
I'd recommend it for uh, for anybody. I, I really like this skid plate. It's very heavy duty. And I think it'll serve me well. If I ever end up breaking it in any way, then I might upgrade to an aluminum one, which is stronger, even though there are a couple downsides to the aluminum one. But overall, I think this is going to be a, um, a great addition to this bike in terms of protecting the engine and also making it a little bit more slippery over logs. Keep in mind though, this does technically reduce your ground clearance by about that eight millimeter mark because the factory skid plate actually sat subsurface to the frame ever so slightly, where this sits underneath the frame. So take that into consideration, but... Oh, and it does add weight. This is a lot heavier than the factory one. The factory one weighs pretty much nothing. This one weighs a good couple pounds. But it's right down low at the lowest possible point on the bike. So it's really, it's a non-factor. One quick thing before I go, just a... Um, some information about my upcoming videos on this bike and actually my CB500F. I did purchase some new handlebars. Um, for a couple of reasons, I'll go into that in those videos. This is just to say that this is a CR mid, CRM, I had to write that because it's not labeled anywhere on here. This is a CR mid bend and it matches this factory um, profile almost perfectly, it is just ever so slightly shorter. So a CR high would, I'd say, be a near perfect match to the factory handlebar of this bike. Um, this is just the uh, rather inexpensive Tusk aluminum handlebar. Um, it's still the same thicker core, or uh, thicker wall, sorry, thicker wall that uh, all the aluminum bars have. And for half the price, I think these are pretty decent. By half the price, I mean half the price of the Pro Taper and Renthal and other name name brand bikes, or sorry, name brand bars. But uh, that way I could get two bars for the price of one of the others. I don't expect these to be as strong. And uh, that's this is also the reason why I haven't done the hand guard install yet is because I was waiting to get these bars in to see how they would fit up. So. That's just a look ahead on to uh, some other projects that will be coming up, hopefully shortly, but uh, no guarantees on when they will officially be out. Notice that that is also a little loose. Uh, I just, I bumped that in the shop and it uh, came loose, but I'm not riding it this time of year anyway, so it doesn't make much difference. So without me rambling on further, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate everyone who watches and comments on these videos. It uh, makes it a lot more engaging. So until next time, see ya.